Good morning, I'm Renata Skuma. Welcome to this morning's USB Leaders Angle. And the topic we're going to discuss today is Flourish, the seeds of self-care. In this presentation, I will equip you with some basic skills in terms of sleep, exercise, education, diet and socializing and why it's so important for your mental health and to flourish in your personal and professional life. So let's start at why flourish? What is the meaning of flourish? Flourish is a word that comes dates back to more or less 1300 from the old French floris, which means floral or flowering and blossom, but it's to grow and to develop, to really develop into your full potential. There's a quote that say, your mind is a garden and your thoughts are, this, are the seeds. You have the choice to grow the seeds that you sow, you have the choice to grow flowers or to grow weeds. What is the link between mental health and also flourishing versus languaging? Where flourishing is what we said now, it's that developing to your full potential and being happy and being fulfilled versus languaging is almost like a fading blossom. If you look at the quadrants there, what you can see in the green quadrant is where we want to aspire to be. That is people that's mentally healthy, but you're also flourishing. If you look at the two blue quadrants, it's either where you're ill, but you're still very flourishing in terms of happy with where you are, and then there's the grey quadrant where you can be ill and unhappy, or not flourishing, not taking care of yourself. So in self-care, if we do not pay attention to ourselves, we will find ourselves in a wilderness where there's burnout. Where burnout is we feel disconnected, we feel disgruntled, we feel unfulfilled, we feel alone, we're exhausted and we have decreased performance. Now, I don't want to talk a lot about burnout because that's too late, but how can we prevent it? Now, we are like a garden. If we want to flourish in our personal and professional life, we need to make sure that we nourish ourselves. We need to make sure that we plant that seeds of self-care to really help to protect and to build our resilience, etc. So, self-care is activities and practices that we can do to look after ourselves. But it doesn't help to do it once in a blue moon. If you have a garden, it doesn't help you water it once a month after everything is already dead. So your efforts have to be consistent, focused and sustained. What's interesting, there is now clear scientific evidence that gardening, like, like in literal gardening, is good for us. Studies show that there is now even a movement, especially in the Americas, where there's a movement to what they call horticulture therapy. It creates a sense of responsibility. It provides the opportunity to be a nurturer. You can take out some of your aggression when you do hard work, but you can also prune the little things and de um, dead dead your seedlings. So it's kind work that can give you also a feeling of relaxation. We also increase our dopamine and our serotonin. Dopamine gives us energy, joy, drive. It gives color to our life, where serotonin prevents anxiety and depression. What is the seeds of self-care, the seeds of mental health? SEEDS is an acronym that I use, and it stands for sleep, exercise, education, diet and socialize. Okay, so that's the seeds that you're getting today to take home with you. So if we start with sweet peas, if you're really a novel gardener, sweet peas is a good place to start. It has big seeds, it's the correct time of the year to sow them now. From sweet peas we go to peaceful sleep. Why is sleep important to us? Now sleep is not only necessary because we have to rest. There's a few good reasons for it. So it's not only restful, it's about your immune system. They've done studies where we know that if someone is sleep deprived, and you will know also if you're exhausted and overworked, you're more prone to flus and colds and all of those things. But we actually have medical studies that show if we vaccinate people and we test the immunity, the antibodies four weeks later, that people that is sleep deprived have up to 90% less antibodies than people that have enough sleep. Now sleep deprivation is not the same for some people and others. Some people, the average is about seven, eight hours, but a lot of people do very well in five to six hours, but there's people that need nine to 10 hours. And the rates of obesity is 50% more in people that does not sleep enough. <coughs> Something to think about, but you mustn't sleep too much because you still have to burn the kilojoules. Okay, so there's a balance. Okay, it's shown that our brain is very, very active when we sleep and it does two things. The one thing is it, it lays down memories, but it's also very important to dream because in dreams you problem solve. 
The other new things that we know now now from scientific evidence that sleep is crucial in removing toxins from our brain. We actually have a lymphatic system in our brain, fluids that's between the cells and also our cerebrospinal fluid. All the canals go open when we sleep and we remove toxins and we remove what they call plaques and tangles and things that make us prone to dementia. So there's a lot of good reasons why you need to sleep. Moving on to Cosmos. Cosmos is one of my favorite flowers. I grew up in the Free State and I had vivid recollections of a small child that we stopped next to the road in the Eastern Free State and we just collected bunches of Cosmos. It's an extremely grateful flower that just grow anywhere. Now because they self-seed, they do a lot of the activity themselves. So they're energetic flowers. They do their own exercise. So why is exercise important for us? Now we know it's important for all kinds of medical reasons, blood pressure, weight regulation, all of those. But there's also other important things. The hippocampus is your memory area. And it's proven that if you exercise more physically, your memory areas in your brain grow. The other thing is, it also shrink the anxiety areas in your brain. So you have less negative emotions if you exercise. It decreased depression. If you exercise five times a week, 30 minutes, it decreased depression and anxiety with 47%. It also improved your concentration with 20%. So if you're at work and you really feel you cannot read another page, you cannot type another email, put on your tackies and walk around the building for 20 minutes. But then the other thing, there's an additional thing about exercise, why it's good to exercise with someone. Never mind that it helps you to be accountable at times. If you know you need to meet someone half past five in the pool, it's easier to go and swim. But also the social support and resilience. That's why this new movement towards spark <coughs> runs that you can do with friends and family is a very good thing. Love and the mist make beautiful little seed pots. And if you crush them, they just go everywhere. As we take care of that seed pots, if you crush the seed pots and you reseed them, education, as a child, we have some input. We form that little seed pots to spread and to grow. Now, as an adult, we cannot afford not to continue educating ourselves. Our brain, in a way, is like a muscle. If you snooze your dues, we need to work our brain. Okay? So your brain is geared for lifelong learning. We know that if we use it, it can form new connections. You're not like born like this and that's it. You can form new connections, new synapses. It can become more and more effective. It's shown that if you do regular games, whether it's a doku, coloring, bingo, whatever, chase 30 seconds, that it's, they, it's a 40% decrease in your risk for dementia over time. Um, also, linguistic skills. So challenging yourself to try to learn another language or um, a new musical instrument can de decrease the incident of dementia with up to 40%. Neurobics means to do the routine activities we do just in a different way by changing how the communication between different parts of the brain is flowing, where it's more left to right, more right to left, whatever. It would be for me to use the points in my left hand. It's for you to brush your teeth in the morning instead with your right hand with your left hand. It's pretty <laughs> difficult. So what is the things we can do? Travel, read books, play an instrument, cook a new dish, um, dance, crafts, ditch the calculator every now and again. Columbines. Columbines or Aquilae vulgaris is named after eagles, Aquilae. So it looks like little birds. And if you look closely at the little flowers, the, the outside um, petals, if you look from the other side, it looks like five birdies sitting together and clustering together in a social way almost. What's nice about the, the link between the aquila or the combila, columbines and your diet, it's something that, that will reward you in time. Okay, so if you eat good today, you're not necessarily going to see the results today, but you need to do it. Remember, our brain is basically a chemical soup. It's 70% water and fat. That's all there is in our brain, and then a lot of neurotransmitters and things. But if you consider the neurotransmitters, it's directly related to what we put in our mouth. That's our building blocks. Now, being overweight is bad. Okay, we all know that. Not only for your physical health in terms of diabetes or hypertension, or for your self-esteem or for your joints or whatever, but it increased the risk for, the, um, for depression. Obesity and diabetes is pro-inflammation, so it causes inflammation in your brain, that makes you more depressed. I do um, Banting Plus. 
I do high fat, high protein, and a little bit of carbs. I believe anything, we need everything, okay? But everything in moderation, obviously. So, and, and it's much easier if you like food, it's much easier to exercise than to be on a diet. One of the important things, don't skip breakfast. And that's the biggest sin that most people have. We say, we don't have time, we don't do this. Then you grab a bar and eat it in the car. Furthermore, high intake of omegas. Now, there's always a thing, should I take omega-3 or 6 or whatever? My view is that if you have a deficiency, you need to take what you are short of. But in terms of day-to-day -day living, if you eat healthy, you do not need all this tablets and stuff. Okay, so if you eat your flaxseed oil and your canola oil and your olive oil and you eat your fish every week, especially your freshwater fish, and you eat enough of your green veggies, including the Brussels sprouts, which is very good for you, um, you do not really need to take all these additional things. So nuts and just a healthy balanced diet can give you enough of these nutrients. What about alcohol? If you're going to drink, drink red wine. Okay, but not as much as you want. Okay. So red wine contains resveratrol. Resveratrol have big antioxidant effects in the brain. This one is the second last one, but it's the last one of the five seeds that I'm giving you today. This is about social life. And I chose stocks because stocks is just that one that really gives fragrance in your garden day and night. And it's like having good friends in your life. They are the ones that really give you the fragrance, that intimate connections we have with other people. Why is stocks then important? They are like our friends. Life, the happy life is social rather than solitary. We need conversationally deep rather than superficial interaction with people to really contribute. Social connectedness decreases stress, it decreases depression, ischemic heart disease, mortality, so we live longer. Physical affection, touch, it's important. Everyone doesn't, that. some people have a bigger bubble of personal space, but physical touch is important for us in terms of happiness. And laughter, we know laughter is the best medicine, but laughter literally improves our sense of well-being. There's a very interesting study that is done about social connectedness. And if you look at this, it was done over a very long period of time and in more than 5,000 individuals. What this is, and I know it's a bit small for you, the blocks are men and the circles are women. Yellow is happy people, green is neutral, and blue is sad people. What you can see is unhappy people cluster together. Happy people cluster together. Okay. And what is interesting that they showed, it's not only that I have a good friend that makes me feel better or contributes to my happiness. My friends, good happy friend, contributes to her happiness and mine, and it's for three generations or three times removed. The last thing that I want to say, even if you sow all the seeds, mindfulness is like your sweet williams. Some people know them as pinks, what's also called the hanses. They have a clove smell or a cinnamon smell. It's the spice of your garden. So it's not as fragrant as things like stocks, but it's giving that, it's like salt and pepper in your food. Okay. Why is mindfulness important? doesn't matter what of these things you do. If you diet, if you eat, if you socialize, if you're not in the moment and being mindful of what you're doing, you do not get the full benefits. Studies showed, for example, if I do bicep curls in the gym and I do them mindless like this, there's very little benefit. It, again, increases your memory areas, it decreases your anxiety and stress areas, and it shows that you decrease your heart rate, you improve your in, in, uh, decrease inflammation and in, increase immunity, and just in general, your positiveness. Okay. So there's a big movement in mental health towards mindfulness therapy, and you will see there's a whole mindfulness movement in Cape Town as well. So when you sow your seeds, it's not enough to sow them. You need to take care of them. You need to pay attention. You need to be mindful. So I just want to leave you with the five seeds of mental health. And so if some of you will have beautiful spring and summer gardens, I would be very happy. But more so, if you can really garden your own mind and your own self-care, that will be a great joy. And it's something that you can apply every single day. But like a garden, it's important to do it diligently, to do it daily, and to sustain it. Thank you. <laughs>